people deluded fridays equals q a days thank you very much people consistently obviously for asking questions if i've missed you out it's not on purpose you guys know i give it right into the last minute you guys also know i take questions via a range of platforms you can follow me on twitter facebook snapchat instagram um all of these things um deluded guna 04 and everything apart from snapchat which is dguna 04 and yeah you get the point in it i go above and beyond for you guys with with regards to waiting for your questions i'm never gonna make them up and ask myself them that's just sad and maybe some other youtubers do them things there but i have to stay low to myself so let's crack on anyways thank you for the questions hamza raz has asked who is this Koulibaly fella everyone keeps raving about he must be a young gem prospering in the German league. Um, my guy, sadly, you're mistaken. He's, um, he's a Senegalese centre-half playing for Napoli in the Italian division. And for a while now, probably the last two years or so, in fact, for even longer than that, he's been a good defender. But last 18 months, two seasons, he's really earned a lot of plaudits. And he is a good defender. Um, not to go into certain things, but for several reasons, you probably people probably look at a defender like him with a degree of cynicism. Can he concentrate? Can he ball play? He's an excellent defender, like he's shown. He's got ball playing in abundance. The only issue is, only clubs that I can see affording him is Liverpool because of their new regime. Um, Chelsea have always got bans. Obviously, City and United, their teams, and all the other big European clubs. Because you look at Van Dijk, I'm not comparing them, but Van Dijk went for 75 million. I think Van Dijk's good, and I, but I think this guy's better. Um, so by that logic, this guy's going for anything from in my head. If you're lucky, 50, 60, all the way to possibly 100. Now, 100, 50, 60 is too low. 100 is probably a bit too steep. So, in and around the 75 million mark, what Van Dijk went from is probably what it'd be. Probably in the 80s, maybe just slightly lower. Ironically, I think, because I don't know if they've got the bands for it again, but based on what they've been doing, Liverpool surely should go for him. I say this because Joe Gomez, I F with Joe Gomez heavy. I rate him as a centre-half. Um, I just feel if something, God forbid, if something happens to Joe Gomez like you see him with his current injury or Van Dijk, there's a new, there's a clear drop off um, in quality between the two centre halves. Um, so they, for me, you need three quality centre halves. It would be good um, possibly for Van Dijk, Gomez, and Koulibaly to fight out between each other, bring the best out of them. Um, I think Lovren's been playing better than he gets credit for, but he'll always let you down, no disrespect, and he is lacking ability. Matip is a squad player at best. They've got the young Dutch centre half who I was going to do a video on. He's 16 years of age, he's got a big future, but we need to be easy. I feel if Liverpool were to get Koulibaly, it will take them up another dimension in the same way to a degree. Chelsea need a striker as well, but if I, I, I've been saying, you guys that are my consistent viewers, I think Liverpool with a number nine, I know it's crazy considering their options, but it's another dimension. Could you imagine Liverpool with Koulibaly, Van Dijk and a whole, whole host of options between their attacking options and a number nine, a striker? Well, oh, they they're already giving it to giving a good fight to City in regards to the league title. But imagine they like imagine imagine they had that in the Champions League final last year. Of course, I'm an Arsenal fan. And I don't want to imagine it too much. But you get the point. Either way, my guy, Koulibaly is sick, man. And it would be lovely for Arsenal to afford him. I suppose based on on paper and these cash reserves, we can afford him and the war chest. But we can't get him. Um, next question. Alex um, Bizanos, I like your last name, man. It's a wavy last name, and I always see you commenting, man. Big up yourself, Alex. But um, you've asked me, what are your thoughts on Nicholas Nkulu from Torino? Could he be a solid slash cheap option? Now, I won't, I'm not watching him under the eye. I don't have the most knowledge on him, but I'm sure he pre previously played for Monaco, specifically as well in France, Lyon. I'm so sure he's only left Lyon very recently. I think he's an okay defender, but... Um, if you want me, I don't really have an informed opinion on him. I don't really think much of him. Like you said, it could be a good cheap, um, a cheap option. I'm not too sure how much it would be, but we're broke, so it could be a good option to to exploit or explore. Um, in the same way, you look at Socrates. We signed him for a cut price fee. I still think Socrates is a third choice centre half at best, but he's impressed me a bit more than he than than in fact a lot more than I initially thought. But um, on his logic, it was a cut price fee and it was a decent addition. They could be looking at this guy with the same with the same logic. Um, if he joins the club, again, it wouldn't be the centre-half I'd be looking for, the centre-half to make me think, wow, but at the end of the day, if he's 28, he should be experienced and he, if he could be competent and consistent, then what can I say about you as a defender if you're doing the two things I expect from every player, regardless of names or price tags? I don't think it will happen for what it's worth, my guy, but... Hopefully I've provided an opinion. I don't have the most informed opinions admittedly on the guy, but hopefully I've done you all right, Alex. Um, Harry Hunter's asked, 
Mustafi plus Cash for Manolas. Now, in the same way, I actually like Mustafi, but I would sell him if it, if the opportunity presents itself. When Mustafi came, people were expecting, me and me as well, we were expecting him to take our soccer level in the sense that Koscielny and him, two aggressive centre-halves. This guy's finally the centre-half with the pedigree that we've looked for. And for all of Mustafi, Mustafi hasn't been that, but the underlying issue has been this. There's a problem. We can't expect one man to come and fix us defensively in the same way Torreira. He can't fix our midfield by himself. He does a damn good job, but he can't fix it by himself. We need to look at the way we defend and um, the way we def our approach to defending offense with our offensive players and positional-wise with our defensive players will make all the difference. If that was the case, then it wouldn't matter who you play in that defence. Look at Spurs. I said it in a couple of vids a few months ago. I honestly believe Spurs, that back four, Pochettino specifically, they could play almost anyone. They could, they could play an under-12 player that's in Spurs' academy. Within, obviously, I'm exaggerating, but within that back line. And within reason, I don't think you'd see a difference because they, they know how to defend. Another, well, not really a good example, but um, it can show you what systems do for players. You look at Michael Keane. Um, Michael Keane getting rave reviews at, at, at um, Sean Dyche's um, Sean Dyche's Burnley. Good defensive record. They've lost it now, but a good defensive record. He comes out of he comes out of that and joins Everton, who for what it's worth are not that good defensively. Completely different player. You're thinking I didn't rate him too tough, but you're thinking what's going on there sort of thing. Or you look at Gabriel. Gabriel was atrocious at Arsenal for the large part. He went and joined Valencia with Marcelino, who has well at the time one of the statistically one of the statistical statistically one of the best. Spanish defensive records, and you see how decent he's playing. So such systems can save players, but I think before, long before that, our approach to defending has to change, and it will make it a lot easier, regardless of who is bought or who is thrown in. Now, Manolas, I think he's a good defender. I do think he is prone to mistakes. He can switch off, but I like him. He's aggressive. He can ball play, and he's got part of my language. He's got that shit house. We like. He's a, a bit of a bastard. I like it. Ultimately, he's he's Greek as well, so he'll join the Greek contingent of obviously Mavropanos and Socrates, fellow countrymen that could help on the football pitch. Um, and I know Unemery's been playing a back three, so that might be something that entices him. If we do have to offer Mustafi plus cash, it does speak volumes how broke we are, my guy. I would say that. Um, but maybe, it, it, I suppose it's definitely one of the best, better swap deals I've seen in paper. We know swap deals rarely happen, but it's definitely realistic the way you put it. Um, it's not realistic because swap deals hardly happen, but it is very realistic. And also when you consider, wasn't Mustafi close to returning to Italy with Inter Milan? That could be, if it did happen, Roma is a good club for him to join. Obviously, Rome's a fantastic um, um, area of Italy, and Italy's a lovely country, like I've just said. Um, he's obviously He obviously likes the way of life in Italy, and maybe his family do too, so that could be an avenue. So it's a good question, but I don't think it would happen. Alex again, well, another Alex. Alex Alert, another consistent guy. Do you think Maitland now is playing in different positions has slowed him, slowed him down in his development? Um, it's a difficult one, my guy, because in the academy, he was predominantly... He played all over the place. I saw him in the academy playing in, in further positions on the flanks. I've seen him play central mid. Um, I, I remember a game against Stoke at the Emirates. He played it at fullback. So he's been a bit of a utility man and a consistent guy at that. So on one hand, you could say... You run the risk of becoming a, a jack of all trades, master of none, because I think he's a midfielder, but he's predominantly been at fullback, and he's actually had more joy playing this hybrid right wing, right wing back, winger role sort of thing. So it's a, it's a it's a yes and no. Ideally, I'd love to make Lenaus to get ten games or so playing central mid, learning his craft and competing with Guendouzi, Xhaka, and all of them, man, for a starting position in that in the heart of midfield on a match day. But the same logic as a young 20, 21 year old. At the end of the day, you're getting football. You're getting football. It's that fullback, but you're getting football. You're getting education. Every game gets you, makes you stronger. Also, back in when he gets thrown back into midfield, it actually what he's learned at fullback has actually helped him because he'd have he'd have a greater appreciation for off the ball, for staying intact positionally. You see a lot of midfielders become fullbacks, or a lot of midfielders who come through academies have a spell at fullback. I'm so sure Gerard had a spell at right back, and it did him wonders. Obviously, it doesn't happen for everyone. Um, but yeah, you also, as much as I think he's a midfielder, you also can't rule out him being a, a, a fullback in the future. I know it's completely different, but you look at Danny Rose, he was a winger at that time. If he was still a winger, would he be playing for a top six side and possibly um, in Spurs, or would he be playing for his country? I honestly don't believe he would. The same goes for Bellerin to a degree. If he was a, if he was a right winger, I don't think he'd be at Arsenal. He probably, he probably wouldn't be in the Premier League because... Imagine, Bell no disrespect to Bellerin, he does alright going forward, but if he wasn't a right back and he was played further forward, you would tell me he needs to come out the side. Like, <laughs> do you see what I'm saying, people? So, 
it's, it's a yes and no one, my guy, man. But in short, I don't think so. Um, I'm more towards the no side. You've also said, which English clubs do you think will advance the furthest in the Champions League this season? P.S. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much for your positive comment, my guy. Um, I don't know, man, Kai. I would have said City last year, but Liverpool flipped on his head. So I think I've got to respect Liverpool again. Obviously, they it was a bit of a... I wouldn't say they struggled to get through the group, but it was a, between them, PSG and Napoli. It was a bit partisan. Um, United got PSG. Spurs, Spurs got... Um, who Spurs got? They got Dortmund. I'm not sure, my guy. You know, I actually thinking... I hope to be wrong, but I actually think English guy, English teams could do something this year, you know. Like, I could be wrong. I'm going to say City, purely because they got the strongest side, and then Liverpool, purely because they did it last year. But um, And I hope to God I'm wrong, um, but... You can't always you can't underestimate Spurs again. I hope Dortmund deal with them. Are they playing Dortmund? Forgive me if I'm wrong. And they're not playing Dortmund, but yeah, man, whoever they're playing, I, so they'd they'd be they'd be my size. I don't want to write off United, but the PSG fixture looks gazy. But saying that, they did get knocked out there the French Cup the other day. Well, yesterday, so there might be encouragement there. Um, I've also been asked. We're getting towards the end. Ken Zotz, shout out to you, deluded. Is it just me? Or what? Why is nobody talking about Adama Traore of Wolves? Such a good player. He can add more physical, physical and offensive challenge to any team in the world. I agree with you, my guy. You're 100% right. But also, you've got to remember, his own manager is not criticising him, but criticising him and expects more. And you've also got to see how many times he's actually started for Wolves. It's not that many. It's a decent amount, but it's not that many. And that leads you to think, what, I, what, is he, what isn't he showing? Because like you said, physically, he's a beast. Pace-wise, I was a right-back and a left-back. I wouldn't want to play against him. He's fast and strong, and he's got good technical abilities. It's a myth. He'll destroy me. Um, but the decision-making is what holds him back. If he had decision-making, if he could keep a cool head in the final third, get goals and assists consistently, he wouldn't know disrespect to Wolves. He wouldn't be at Wolves. He'd be at one of the best teams in the world. I know making it a boss is tough, but possibly even there because he's got everything you look for. It's, 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 it's the same De La Feo to a degree, completely different player, but decision-making is why he's not at a top club and they've got ability. Um, like I said, for all his ability and, and, her, and her, forever how much Nuno of Wolves likes him, there's a reason why he either gets subs or doesn't start because he shows you enough, but he's got to kick on to that next level. I do agree, he could add... I'm at the point, Arsenal can't afford no one, so I would love to take him, but because um, he's got what we're missing, that he's a direct pick for... Um, um, issue is a direct problem and an issue for defenders from a wide position but the same logic if he's not bringing in minimum for me 10 goals and and, and 10 goals 10 assists all comped does it really make does it make me sound like a hypocrite and could you really expect him to deliver the goods you could say yes because of his ability but no because of what he's showing you so probably that's the reason my guy ken so yeah cracking on we've got bello well usman bello i keep calling you bello i like that last name my guy you've got asked a few questions another one consistently asking questions um, for your Q&A, as the team of the year being De Gea, Van Dijk, Varane, Ramos, Marcelo, Kante, Modric, Kevin De Bruyne, Ronaldo, and Bappe, and Messi, are you satisfied or would you replace anyone? Um, is that the official one or is that your one? I'm not too sure if that's the official one. I'm not too sure, my guy. Hmm. Based on how the year's been up, off the top of my head, I probably wouldn't change anybody, you know. Probably just for sentimental reasons, probably get um, David Silver in there, but that's about it. Or if you're including this to start to this season, I'd say Raheem Sterling. In fact, Raheem Sterling would be the only one, and he can't even really get in there with that front three. So I think that's a solid team, my guy. Yeah, I can't really can't really disagree with that. But um, yeah, I say I'm satisfied. And you've also finally asked me, assuming Fakir's contract at Lyon ends in 2020, if he refused to sign a new deal and he doesn't leave this summer. Would you have him at Arsenal to replace Ozil? If so, January purchase or a pre-contract agreement? My guy, if it went down to a pre-contract agreement, Arsenal are not getting him. Liverpool were close. Chelsea have wanted it. Allegedly, Madrid won him. When, if, if all of these clubs want you and within their own rights, they can all offer you something and you're a free agent so you'll be lucrative. Um, we can't offer him. It's not even a thing where we can offer him a great sporting project. We can only sell the dream of playing for a big club or a previous big club in Arsenal to a degree we still are, but see how we're not competing. We could only sell him that. We can't offer him major titles. We can't offer him challenging for major titles. We can't offer him Champions League football. Can't, probably can't offer him more lucrative. Well, we can't offer them. We couldn't offer him the wages that Liverpool and them and there could afford him. So it couldn't go down to a, a pre-agreement. 
if it came down to a purchase, you're looking at minute. Well, one that you saw them, you saw Liverpool. What was it? Anything from fifty to seventy. That's that's where it would be. Fifty, you're not getting him. It's probably going to be sixty, possibly even seventy, because his price has gone up. He's not having the season he did last year so far. But yeah, so we probably can't afford him. And yes, I would take him to replace Ozil. I've seen Fikir play very well when he was coming up on, on the flanks and he showed a lot of pace. He had that injury and he came back and he's now thriving, still in wide positions, but he's also more centrally in the last 18 months or two years. And he's thriving from that area and he, he's got a, he's got wonderful technical ability. He's got bravado to make the difference. He can provoke compositions with his play, set pieces. He's got bangers on him. He's not afraid to shoot from distance. Uh, you guys have seen my vids. I love Fikir, but typically these are the signings Arsenal can't afford. So we're going to need to be a bit more smart or creative in our approach, to be honest with you. Um, fine. It's not finally, but um, Ter Teki Torreira's asked me, what is the best borough in London? Um, not really sure how I answer that, but I'm a North London lad, so between the borough of Haringey and the bor borough of Enfield would be my ones, my guy. Um, what other boroughs in North are there? Enfield, Haringey, Islington, technically Camden and Hackney, so, but Hackney is a bit of a weird one because it covers a lot of areas, so I'm just going to go with Enfield and Haringey between the two. If you live in Tottenham and all of this stuff, it's Haringey. If you live in Enfield or N18 or N9 or just Edmonton or, yeah, or Enfield in general, or, I'm so sure it covers a part of Barnet. Um, you'll be Enfield Council. So, yeah, man, I'm going to go with that. I don't really get the question, but I'm going to go with the North London boroughs. But um, anywhere in North London. But, um, yeah, what can I say, people? Thank you each and every time for the questions. Without you lot, I couldn't do this. And hopefully I've given you lots some decent content on this Friday, obviously it's Thursday of me recording this, but yeah, people, stay safe, deluded.